if that which is reported to have happened to happen anymore, any such deviation will make you an unwelcome guest and your welcome will be duly withdrawn. Threat condemnation after Speaker of Parliament threatened to ban journalists from Parliament unless they comply with his directive to limit coverage to official proceedings in the chamber. Speaker's ruling for me gets close to gagging the media once again. I don't want to, remember, uh, to think of a day where we should tell you what you should cover and not to cover in Parliament. I totally disagree with this directive, especially when he's not directed his anger to the, the MPs. We hear from journalists, MPs and civil society as the Speaker is accused of stifling media freedom. This is Top Story with Evans Mentor. And Top Story is always brought to you by Bond Savings and Loans. Your success, our passion, also brought to you by Gassim Cement, the nation builder, and Vodafone. The future is exciting, ready. Tonight, the Speaker of Parliament is facing strong criticism for taking the unprecedented step of threatening to ban journalists unless they comply with his directive to limit their coverage to official proceedings in the chamber. Professor Michael Quick took serious issue today with occasions when journalists cover other events, including press conferences by individuals and groups of MPs outside the Chamber of Parliament. We are talking this story from multiple angles, but first listen to the full directive by the Speaker, which is tonight a subject of some serious controversy. I take a very serious view of the matter raised. Apart from the recognition and permission granted by the speaker, members of the parliamentary press call will be strangers in this honorable house. In other words, they have our permission to be here by dint of their profession and the work expected of them. And we regard them very, very highly. I want to make it clear that as much as they may give interviews before or after the plenary and the proceedings inside this honorable house and which interview or contribution could be for the majority or the minority any day it is forbidden if they have any doubt to abandon the permission giving them to cover proceedings in this honorable house and go outside the chamber itself and do some other work some other work other than coming to cover proceedings in this honorable house. We have a saying in our tree language, if you don't understand, please beg for assistance and understand. And this is very, very important. And honorable members, our democracy must be developing. And I feel very sad when references are made from whatever angle to those things that may or may not have happened in the past which have nothing to do with me anyway today. So let us make progressive development in such a manner that we should not be slaves of the evil practices of the past, if any. 
Because definitely our republic must develop and we must not major in minors nor the undesirables. This affects both sides of the house. So that is a speaker. Well, he did not end there. He then rounds up everything else he says today in, a, in Parliament, the directive, which was pretty extensive, by now issuing threats. If the directive we just had there is not observed in a stricter sense. I want to let the media know if that which is reported to have happened should happen anymore, I have reminded you of the fact that you are here as guests. By my permission, because of the importance this house attaches to the inky profession, any such deviation will make you an unwelcome guest and your welcome will be duly withdrawn. After sitting, that is when I rise, I want to meet the head of the group as well as the director of public affairs and her group. Honorable members, you recollect, I made mention of the need to be very circumspect in an, honor, in an election year. Please, let us do our work within the parameters of the rule as parents and then do our politics within the appropriate confines. This is a very important statement which may bring sanctions in the future. Please, both sides of the house, kindly take note accordingly. Uh, my colleague, uh, parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opoku Gapo, who sat through that uh, strong directive himself, and we'll, we'll, we'll tell you what our position is here at Multimedia shortly, and whether it affects uh, and whether we'll be complying with this directive. And Joseph may be the person who will have to be executing that shortly. But Joseph, how did we get to this point with this directive? So just when the business of the house was beginning, the majority leader said Chairman Sabunsu said he had an issue he had to raise and then he drew attention to the press conference yesterday by uh, the MP for Lembele, Emmanuel Bois and you recall that the minority MPs were not debating the state of the nation address, they were silent as only the majority side debated the issues. And according to the majority leader, he looked at the press gallery side and saw that it was empty and when he inquired he was told that some minority MPs were addressing the media outside parliament and so he said that it was out of place and that the first responsibility of journalists who come to the house is the chamber and who told him that um, he didn't quote any documentation to back that but he says so as, that's what he as, believed as, that our first responsibility is the chamber as long as you've been accredited to report from the house then your first responsibility is the chamber well and you shouldn't be doing other things outside the chamber when sitting is thankfully we can hear him explain how he came to that conclusion listen to jamie someone um, we commenced the debate on the president's state message on the state of the nation and um, along the line I observed that the house had been made naked by the media houses that were supposed to cover proceedings in the chamber and I requested one of the deputy whips to follow up to see what was happening because the uh, media houses, the Arab representatives in the house, had evacuated the chamber. Figure I was informed later by a deputy whip that indeed uh, a member of parliament who had opted not to be in the house to participate.
participate in the debate, had engaged the press outside about the content of the president's speech. For which reason, the press had followed that member outside. Mr. Speaker, let it be on record that the media are accredited to come and cover proceedings in the chamber. Any group or caucus that we want to engage the press could do so. But normally, Mr. Speaker, as we did when we were the minority, we would engage the press before the sitting of the House. Perhaps something dramatic would have happened in the chamber, which may occasion the press following to inquire whatever might have happened. Other than that, if proceedings are going on in the chamber and you are credited to cover proceedings, you don't leave the chamber at the beck and call of an individual member of parliament to cover that member of parliament. So that is what really led the speaker to now make the particular directive. I'm saving the reaction of the minority leader for last very shortly. I'll tell you what his position was on the matter. In fact, that particular position has put him in direct conflict with some of his own uh, minority members who are speaking out tonight. That shortly, Joseph is still with me in the studio. But I quickly want to go onto the phone lines and bring in the executive director of the Media Foundation for West Africa, who joins us on the telephone line, Raila, Mr. Suleiman Abrama. Mr. Abrama, thank you for your time. You're on Top Story. Thank you for having me, Evans. Also joining me is the uh, dean of the uh, parliamentary uh, press corps, uh, Joyce is on the telephone line right now. Uh, thank you uh, for joining us here on Top Story. Thank you very much, Ivan. Uh, Mr. Brian, I want to start with you. Your reaction to this directive? Well, um, I, I think that I'm quite surprised about the directive from the speaker. And I think it's a very, very controversial and quite a disturbing um, um, turn of events. Uh, my 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 view is that Parliament is uh, an assemblage of the representatives of the people of Ghana, and whatever happens there, the media have a responsibility to convey it to the people of Ghana. Now, um, when you talk about parliamentary activities and who is head and who is not head, we all know that quite often Parliament. Would, I mean, members of parliament will tell us, no, parliamentary work is not just about what happens um, in the plenary. There's a lot of work that goes on uh, that, 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 that and, so on and so forth. Besides, I think that the Joy FM sends a correspondent to parliament. It is the decision of the editor to decide what would be newsworthy and what is, news what is not newsworthy from parliament. And therefore, if I'm a correspondent or I'm a member of a parliamentary press call and there is a, a, a press conference being called at a time when plenary debates are happening and I happen to tell my, my editor that, look, this group is organizing a press conference at, right at this time and my editor thinks or I think that that perhaps is going to be newsworthier for my audience and therefore I choose to attend that one and then that gives me the trouble of being either bad or uh, being an unwelcome guest. I think that that directive may bother, directive may bother on um, censorship and to some extent deciding what the media should be covering and not be covering. And I think it's a very, very worrying development. Apart from that, Evans, I, th I think that if the event that the media had left to cover was an event by some demonstrators or some party foot soldiers and so on and so forth. Uh, perhaps I could understand. But if it was by members of parliament, then I would assume that perhaps the speaker's main concern should be that when parliamentary proceedings are taking place, no member of parliament is allowed to do A, B, or C. But to come that and now to define for parliamentary press call what they can cover, what they cannot cover, what they can do at what time. Uh, and, 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 and you make that point, and I just want to emphasize, the Speaker of Parliament, the limit of his authority, really, is over the members of Parliament and not journalists. And you make that point correctly, that his, his, his directive should be at the members over which he superintends do not do any activity when there is official parliamentary business. But he chooses to direct this 
as the as the as the journalist who must exercise an editorial discretion, and he rightly pointed out which event is most newsworthy. Exactly, I think I think I think that is where I mean that is what I, I find quite extremely worrying. And 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 I, when our constitution says that there shall be no censorship, I mean what it means is. The media should not be dictated to in terms of what they can cover and what they cannot cover. Of course, there are limitations um, in terms of what is right to do, what is not right to do professionally, and so on and so forth. But for the Speaker of Parliament, a uh, parliament that is made up of representatives of the people, I think if a representative of the people decides that there is this debate going on, but I have a particular issue that I want to address, and the media, he talks to the media, and the media finds that item more newsworthy and they decide that okay at this time this is what we want to focus on because the person is a member of parliament a representative of the a representative of the people and he's talking about this issue that we find newsworthy i don't think that it should be the speaker's um <laughs> business i should say to determine where the media must be at what time what issue they must be covering at what time and so on and so forth of course yes the media are there um, at, based on his permission, he can make a decision. But, well, we want to have a parliament that has no coverage from the media. <laughs> and that will be another issue. Yeah, exactly. Even that can be a subject of some contest in court. E exactly. Yes, but, but yes, he can go ahead and make that decision. But uh, to say that um, from now on, you are allowed to do this, you are not allowed to do that, and so on, I, I think that it's really borders on what the Constitution frowns on, which is that there shouldn't be any acts of censorship within our democratic space. I'm grateful that you joined us, uh, Suleiman Abraham. And now Ajiman uh, Benkrain is the uh, parliamentary uh, uh, dean of the press corps, joins us on the line. And Ajiman, uh, uh, this, we had a speaker that say that um, there was going to be some form of a meeting. Did that meeting happen and what was concluded? Yes, it did happen. Thank you very much, Ivan. It did happen. And um, the conclusion was that we should rather be cautious the way we, we operate here in the parliament and that we shouldn't try to abandon the work that goes on in the chamber and rather focus on um, some other activities within the premises of parliament. And that just just like Honorable uh, uh, Mr. Suleimana rightly said, um, the, 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 the House is uh, assembly where the representative people are, and that's where the, the, the major issues are discussed. So we should rather focus on the issues that goes on in the on the floor of the House rather than, you know, uh, targeting one or two MPs and then interview them. So that was the basis, the basis of the uh, the meeting that we had. Now, that Ajiman, the, just quick question: As a leader of the parliamentary press corps, did we had the, the the speaker clearly say journalists are forbidding from covering anything outside the chamber? Did you agree with that? It's it's even it's rather unfortunate that we've gotten to this stage because I thought this issue was even dealt with yesterday because when. Some members were outside the chamber. Uh, Honorable Nyandam drew my attention that this is what the leader is saying and that we've abandoned the chamber. I quickly mobilized my people that, look, we have abandoned the work of the, in the chamber. So some of us went back to, into the chamber. And I called Honorable Nyandam to let him know that we have come back to the chamber. No, no, forgive me. I'm, I'm curious that you actually thought it was even editorially appropriate as a journalist that you would heed to a politician's concern that you've uh, abandoned chamber and asked co colleague journalists to comply and come back in. You know this better than I do, possibly, that editorial discretion about what to cover is solely the prerogative of a journalist, not a politician, not even the Speaker of Parliament. I quietly understand you, but Evans, you know that when the story broke, Whenever we get a new story, we want to get the true side of the stories. So we've listened to whatever happened in the chamber. We needed to get to the minority side. The minor, it was even uh, important for us to come and listen to Honorable Boy because the minority had hinted that they want to take part in the debate. So we wanted to listen to whatever Honorable Boy wanted to say. We had listened to him. We had finished listening to him. That was when I hinted my members that we still need to go and cover whatever is going on in the in the chamber so some of us went back to the chamber to to cover the parliamentary proceedings and i told on Nyandam that this is some of us have come and the, the, the gallery is already full and he drew the attention of uh, honorable the majority leader that the, the press are also in the chamber and so when when we broke, when we came today and then the news was 
uh, on the floor of the house. I, I, I was rather, I, I find it very unfortunate for this issue to be raised on the floor of the house because, listen, um, we, we practice our work here as journalists and we know what is newsworthy for our listeners. And we, 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 we cannot be gagged or we cannot be detected to on what to cover and what not to cover. But this is where we've gotten to. We still, um, we just came out from the meeting and then I've made uh, my intention known to the Director of Public Affairs that we need to have more deliberation for the leaders to understand the, the, the way we operate. Okay. So, so what happens from tomorrow? Um, if something is happening, what, what, what is the agreement going forward? Is it going to be enforced or it has been relaxed and journalists can still exercise their discretion as the Constitution uh, demands that we do? Uh, from the understanding that we had after our meeting with the Speaker, I, re I think uh, they've had the... Uh, they, they've had the understanding that we can still go on to do our work with, for, for our own discretion. We can choose what to cover and what not to cover. But we should give priority also to whatever goes on in the chamber. Okay, I'm grateful that you join us. As, what, what we give priority to, I'm sorry, it's not the prerogative of any member of parliament, not even the prerogative of the speaker. It is our prerogative and our prerogative only. And as you've heard, the uh, Suleiman Abrama say, the speaker can decide. In fact, he's threatened to do so. To withdraw accreditation in fact he can do so but then that even is open for legal challenge the courts will have to decide that eventually but let's come to i'll speak to something later in it shortly he's uh he's a legal practitioner uh he's a journalist himself but i want to quickly bring you the harun edris's response who's a minority leader to that directive that the speaker eventually gave did he agree he did and made the point that the media needs to pay attention to the concerns that have been raised by the majority leader, except to say that, uh, he, he certainly made the point in the course of the conversation that the, major, the, ma the majority leader virtually did the same things when he was minority leader. But essentially, Harun Idris, who backed the uh, concerns raised by Osei Chemen Sabuntu. You are here once upon a time in the minority, and you are there as majority, and probably tomorrow you will be here again. The club will always change. I agree that the media should be dutiful to this parliament and to this house. And therefore, the media behave in a manner that you are serving the institutions of parliament and not any individual member of parliament. And Mr. Speaker, it does not lie within the majority leader to determine who holds what conference where. That is why my elected representative were entitled to media, not just the parliamentary media. So, beautifully, the media is beautiful to the institution of parliament and is minded by his past antecedents. The media is guided by his past antecedents, sitting here as minority leader. In what you do, whether those antecedents serve his house or serve the purpose as leader of the minority then, but I, 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 I agree with you that the media must be up and doing. They should cover the proceedings of government. So that's the minority leader. You're agreeing uh, fundamentally with the principle that we should uh, cover the proceedings of parliament and not be cover individuals. I think he made that point at the beginning. Although he has some concerns about what Chairman Sabon you know, cannot be dictated, but he, he, he agreed with this. This has put him in some conflict with some of the members of parliament, his own on site, who are very upset with this particular decision. Uh, so the, the reactions have been general um, in the conversation with some of the MPs. They make the point that uh, this is uh, virtually amounts to guiding of the media. So Kwame Abuja, for example, makes that point, and he thinks that that shouldn't be the way forward. But the members of the parliamentary press corps themselves have actually been reacting beyond the leader that we had a while ago, and a lot of them are not happy with this directive. I totally disagree with this directive, especially when he's not directed his anger to the, the MPs, members of parliament. Uh, let's speak to another member of the parliamentary press corps. So such warning, I mean, such warning, I, I mean, to the, to the PPC, I, I, you know, it's, it's, and I, 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 was, I, was, I was, I was shocked, I was shocked too. Thank I you. totally disagree with this directive, as I said, when we come to parliament, covering proceedings of parliament is not limited to what happens in the chamber. And that is a fact. And therefore, if he's given this such a directive, I totally disagree with this kind of directive. Uh, let me go to something Larry in a private legal practitioner. There's a statement coming from the Public Affairs Directorate of uh, Parliament. We'll bring you that shortly. There's a setting 
attempt to you know uh, dress up the issues we'll try and get to the bottom of that uh, but something question should journalists obey this directive absolutely not read my lips absolutely not this it's actually a clear, not overt, infringement of the Constitution in many parts. Articles 21, Articles 162, uh, various clauses of Article 162, particularly Clause 4, Clause 5. The Speaker had absolutely no business conducting himself in the manner that he has done. And the majority leader and the minority leaders seeking to also make comments that, that makes me feel very depressed this very time, that they cannot do the things they're seeking to do. And in fact, if um, an action was, was, was instituted in respect of um, threatened violation of the constitutional rights guaranteed to the media, um, the court, I have no doubt whatsoever, will not blink in telling the MPs and the Speaker to their faces that they have absolutely no right to try to interfere in the editorial discretions of the media and to try to do things that the Constitution clearly prohibits them from doing. And to think that the Speaker actually wrote this statement and read it that is more frightening and depressing. Um, he knows the Constitution a lot more. And, 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 and it is disgusting to think that, you know, we could get to this point. There have been uh, inf infractions of media freedoms uh, in, in recent times, but I, nobody would ever think that it would get to this point. It does appear that even the Parliament will not be of any help, but the court who have so far that I have gone to court over some of these matters are the ones that will, will assist the media. So nobody has any business seeking to comply with an illegal and unconstitutional order. But he threatens us that if we don't, he will withdraw our accreditations. He will, in fact, he will stop us from, from coming. If so we are guests, and they, that, it's a privilege. We, that, that can be withdrawn. Okay, so the parliament... It's a part of government, is that not so? It is. Right. Article 126, uh, Article 162, Clause 5, says that the media has a job. And what is the job? The job given by the media here is to uphold the responsibility and accountability of the, of the government to the people. When the media go there, they are doing what the Constitution says they should do for the people. And... The law says they are not to be penalized or harassed for their editorial opinion or views or the content of their publications. But check this. They are not supposed and have no business to interfere. This is what they are doing. They are interfering. They are interfering and seeking to control the way the media should do its job. And this is what the Constitution is clearly against and prohibits. I believe that the Speaker and the leaders who have spoken upon reflection, if they have forgotten, will discover that they cooked big time. They cannot do what they have threatened to do. And if they did so, uh, let's hear the Media Commission, uh, National Media Commission, let's hear the Ghana Journalists Association. And beyond that, if they did it, which they won't, they won't try. You know, the, the GJA should lead the process to court, to have the court tell these uh, members of parliament and the speaker in their faces that what they did is, an, is, is, is a complete, complete abhorrence. It's not done. You don't dictate what they do. And they come there, they don't come there at your pleasure. They don't come there because you, they are your guests, and you entertain them, and you accommodate them. They come there because the Constitution has empowered them to be there to reflect what government does to the people. They are there for the people, and that is the People's Assembly, that place.
is the people's assembly. It's a very important place. And there is no other place than that place that the media should be doing the job it has been given under the Constitution. This is completely out of control. It's very disheartening. It's depressing, to say the least. Well, I'm grateful, Samson, and articulating the position of the law there. Um, as I indicated, what is our view on this matter? We take our view from what the Constitution uh, mandates us to do, which is, in essence, do our job without interference. And Samson touched on it. I just want to quote it. Chapter 12 of the Constitution. Uh, that's uh, Article 4. Editors and publishers of newspapers and other institutions of the mass media shall not be subject to control or interference by government. And as something has articulated, it's an arm of government to say, to mention parliament. Parliament is. And so for us here, we are absolutely going to be professional and hold the sole authority over editorial discretion, including where we cover our stories and how we cover the story. That will be our sole prerogative as the Constitution guarantees. And so you can read into that what you weigh. But that is our position. In other words, not the Speaker, not the Parliament, not the politician will dictate to us how we cover our story. As a, something I said, the Speaker has the mandate and authority to revoke the invitation. But even that is, as we have again heard, one that uh, can be a subject to some challenge if we so wish. Let me bring in um, the... <clears throat> member of the Communications Committee in Parliament. There's a statement coming from Parliament. We'll read that very shortly. Uh, Mr. Sam George joins us on the telephone line. Right, now, Mr. George, you were in the House today when this uh, verdict was read. I've heard your minority leader say uh, that, yeah, I mean, I, he agrees with, with the thing that the journalists should, you know, not give attention to other. What is your own view as a member of Parliament representing your people um, in, in your constituency? A very good evening to your listeners. Let me be clear what the Honourable Harold I. Jesus said. He said it was a fair call to make that the proceedings in the plenary be given coverage. However, he drew the attention of the majority leader who made the pleading to the speaker to his own antecedents. And what is the antecedents that the minority leader was referring to? When Honorable Rosaiche Mensah Bonsu, majority leader and minister for parliamentary business today, was in the minority, he used to call press conferences at 9 a.m. and keep those press conferences going till 11.30 when the business of the house ought to start at 10. So calling a press conference and keeping the media men in that press conference before and long after Parliament has started its business is the antecedent that Honorable Aaron Idrisu referred to. I want to, I hold a simple view, that the Article 3 or, or Standing Order 3, or, yeah, Article 3 of our Standing Orders, the Speaker has the prerogative to issue and use his discretion to issue directives. However, anybody who seeks to interpret Article 3 or our standing orders just like that must do that in consonance with, I think, Article 269, which says that any power vested in any public officer must not be used in a manner that is arbitrary, capricious, or with prejudice. And so, yes, the Speaker has the power to rule the way he did today. But is his, is, is his ruling arbitrary? Is it without prejudice? Is it without capriciousness? Those are the questions we need to ask. And when somebody says that, or, or, or the speaker in this instance, with all due respect to him, rules that granting or covering an interview or a press conference of a member of parliament on an issue of national discourse, on an issue that is properly before parliament, and says that that is not parliamentary business, then we need to redefine what parliamentary business again is. The speaker will need to come clear what parliamentary business is. Again, let me ask a simple question. There are instances when, during the sitting of parliament, when the public order or public business is in, is, is in session, the speaker takes leave of parliament to go and attend to foreign dignitaries like ambassadors and visiting ministers from other countries. In those meetings of the speaker, the press corps is asked to leave the chamber and go and cover those meetings of the speaker. At the time that the plenary is in session. So how does this sit within the speaker's own ruling? Will the speaker be 
in contempt of his own ruling, if he has a foreign dignitary tomorrow and the press uh, uh, officer in parliament ask the media to leave the media, the chamber, and go and cover the, the, the speaker's uh, meeting, I thought that when the application was made to the speaker, the speaker should have given general comments and taking his time to reflect on them and consult with the media to find, through his, the, the parliamentary public affairs department, to find a workable solution. But to give a ruling there and then, with far-reaching consequences, including revoking the accreditation of a media man or a media house to parliament, I, I think smacks of a little kind of censorship on the media. And it's something that I think that, I, I believe that even parliament itself is beginning to rail with from the backlash. I'm aware that the, the public affairs department is immediately calling for a meeting tomorrow with media men at 9 o'clock to find a middle ground. A middle ground should have been found before a public pronouncement of that nature, which amounted to a fiat. Uh, Mr. George, if, if you look at the concern that was expressed, though, isn't there a certain, I guess, amount of uh, distraction that goes on when... There's official business in the House. And then one member of Parliament uh, exits and then calls the media to give an interview. And in the media, obviously, we are making decisions about, you know, what is newsworthy. If we deem that individual to carry enough weight and therefore newsworthy, we will definitely leave and go and cover. But doesn't that then affect, um, at least, his absence in the chamber is an issue one. And, of course, then your constituents don't get the coverage as, as far as the in-house real official business is concerned. Isn't that a, 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 at least a justified reason um, or concern? Let's, let's call a spade a spade. This whole ruling and this whole application simply goes to the heart of what happened with this year's State of the Nation address. The majority, including the Speaker, is pained by the actions of the minority. The fact that we walked out on the President. And the fact is being compounded by the fact that we decided we will not debate the owner. And we have decided that we will not debate the sonar because it makes no sense to debate the, 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 the empty sonar that we didn't listen to in the chamber. However, we will speak about the true state of the nation to the media. The media must have editorial discretion to decide what is newsworthy and what uh, your editorial policy you want to cover. Do you want to cover some George who is going to be speaking about the closure of radio stations by this government that the president failed to speak about in the communication sector? Or do you want to go and listen to a communications minister who is just going to come and sing praises of the president, even when it is not reflective of the reality? You have an editorial discretion to make. If you decide that you want to listen to Sam George, who is not coming to tell you about the kind of food my wife cooked for me, but is talking about a public policy issue, that I am well seized with the facts to discuss because I am a member of the Communications Committee on Parliament, and I'm speaking to a public issue that is within the purview of that committee of parliament, how then does that amount to a dis dis distraction? Is that not parliamentary business? That is what, the fact that it is Sam George speaking, or in the case, specific case yesterday, Honorable Emmanuel Kofi Amabwa was speaking on issues relating to energy. Today, I've heard many radio stations carry stories about the ongoing doing so, which government is denying. That is a major national issue. What people want to listen to. And so if at the time in the chamber you had people, members of the majority, praising and calling the president a savior from heaven, the late Jesus Christ, and the media saw that as needless waste of, of, of media airspace, and saw the, 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 the former minister of energy speaking on issues that are current and trending, that has to do with doing so that is ongoing, that the government is failing to admit, and stating the facts to it, if a media house chose to go and listen to that, how then do you how then do you keep anybody in the line? This amounts to censorship. This amounts to an attempt to use the executive power to de to legislate what should be your editorial content. And I think that you as a media must not accept it. I, and before I came on, I heard you saying that you would you would resist this and you would choose who to listen to and who to cover up what. And I think that is what should should be the case. But my, my final know, question to you, mm. my, my final question to you, um, Mr. George. I was going to ask you, so, I mean, you are members of parliament, you have powers to intervene in, on this matter, uh, that what you're going to do. But I'm struggling to ask you that question, because your own leader, yes, he raised some issues about the thing, but 
fundamentally agrees with the concerns that were raised on the basis of which the speaker gave that ruling. You are a minority member. When your leader does that, it's a clear, clear conflict with what you're just telling me right now. My leader did not, and I'm, I'm, I'm stating this emphatically because I was in the chamber. My leader did not endorse the position that Honorable was H.A. Mensah Bonsu raised. Honorable was H.A. Mensah Bonsu prayed the speaker to compel every member of, uh, of the press corps to listen to and stay within the chamber when the debate was going on. That is what Honorable was H.A. Mensah prayed the speaker. Honorable Haruna said yes, it was important to strike a balance and said he agreed that the need to cover plenary discussion was, was good. But every member of parliament also had the right. Honorable Haruna made that case. So it is a misrepresentation to suggest that Honorable Haruna agreed so little and in complete terms with what Honorable Sir H.M. and Bosu did. In fact, he went ahead to point out that under Speaker Dwa Jaho, Honorable Sir H.M. and Bosu, while Speaker Dwa Jaho was sitting in the chair presiding over the house, Honorable Osei Chimes Ambozu was with the media, crying and holding press conferences. There were days he did two press conferences in a day, whilst, whilst Parliament was sitting. And so he, he reminded him of that. And when Osei Chimes Ambozu had the opportunity to respond, he failed to address even that fact that he himself appeared to be a contradiction of his current position, mm. based on his own antecedents. So it, I am not speaking at cross purposes with the minority leader. And I know and speak the mind of the minority leader when I say the minority leader believes in the editorial discretion of the media. Don't forget the minority leader has been a minister of communication. He believes in your right as a media house to determine your editorial policy. And that it is not the place of an executive government, of a legislative arm of government, or even a court to arbitrarily and with prejudice determine what your editorial policy is. I'm grateful, Sam George. He's a member of the Communications Committee uh, in Parliament. As you've been speaking, there's been a statement from the Parliament on this particular matter, an attempt to, I guess, um, Joseph is a member of Parliament. What, make peace? So, more like um, to clear up the issues and uh, virtually backtracking on some of the developments that emerged on the floor of the House earlier today. So, this statement is signed by Kate Addo, who is Director of Public Affairs, and it comes to another heading, Parliament not seeking to gag press. And in that statement, she says the Office of Parliament has noted media reports reporting that the Speaker of Parliament is seeking to gag the media. And then she goes on to say the Office would like to put on record that at no time in his capacity as Speaker or his personal capacity has Professor Aaron Michael Quay sought to prevent the media from doing its work. The allegation, she says, follows events from the Chamber on Tuesday during which concerns were raised about the media leaving the chamber during deliberations by members in the house. In the next paragraph, she makes the point that, in fact, proceedings from the chamber centered on the need for members of the press corps to remain in the chamber while proceedings were ongoing to ensure they had a full account of the events as they unfolded. And then the speaker in his directive referred to the primary reason for which members of the media are accredited to report from the house and also urged them to focus on saying. Okay. She doesn't exactly really um, walk away from a lot of the point because in that paragraph you read her make the point that mm -hmm. um, the, the media are credited to report from the house and they are being urged to focus on same report from the house. Yeah. But then she goes on to make the point that... The and I can't repeat enough. Nobody can dictate to any media anywhere in the world what we focus on. That is ours and ours only. And that won't change, not even with this directive. Exactly. And uh, Kitado says the Speaker further stated that members of the media wanting to secure interviews from parliamentarians could do that before or after sittings to enable them to remain in the chamber during proceedings. He further asked both sides of the House to desist from asking media for uh, speaking opportunities when the House is sitting. But, uh, you know, the point about the Speaker further stating that members of the media wanting to secure interviews from parliamentarians could do so before or after to enable them remain in the chamber during the proceedings. Mm. That bit actually didn't come up about the need for this being to get MPs to sit in the house during proceedings. The yeah. speaker, the speaker didn't did actually they, yeah. did he didn't say one that. word no. about the no, members he, of parliament over whom he superintends. He didn't. He didn't. Over he didn't. whom he directly superintends. Not one word. 
but he chooses to focus all his anger and his, uh, on the journalists who are simply doing the job as they deem fit, as the constitution says they should. He didn't. So it's amazing where uh, the Public Affairs Department of Parliament is getting those points from yeah. on today's proceeding. But then uh, the Public Affairs Department goes on to make the point that Parliament recognizes the critical role of the media. And the speaker made reference to Sam when he spoke about the high regard with which he holds the media's work. Both leaders refer to the need for a dutiful media and the need for the media to remain in the chamber while the House is still in session. Mm-hmm. But again, as you rightly make the point, <laughs> that is not their decision in terms of whether the journalist who is in the house not. wants to stay in the chamber so far or would want to be elsewhere the speaker in the house. cannot and will not ask the members of parliament not to start doing other events while and they still do press conferences while we will cover and the speaker holds courtesy calls when sitting is ongoing on have you covered that before while yes, the ch- yes whilst the chamber yes. is in session so, so then he will leave and hand over no 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 you, let's let's be let's be clear the speaker Whilst the chamber is in session, leaves to hold um, other meetings like Ketsky calls. It happens. And the media leaves their gallery and goes to cover the speaker. It happens virtually every week I see. when some of those uh, uh, people pay Ketsky calls on the speaker, uh, ambassadors, uh, people from the European Parliament, um, old school students from various institutions. And so while it sometimes happen, it's a situation where when the sitting is, hap- is ongoing, then the speaker will take leave and ask the first deputy speaker to take over proceedings. And sitting will continue, motions will be debated, statements will be read, and the speaker will be in his chamber, um, you know, receiving his guest. And usually when that happens, we see the media being invited to cover those events, and then they will then have to leave the gallery in order to go undertake some of those activities. That's a very important point. And so the principle he established today, which is you leaving official chamber parliamentary work to cover other things in his words were outside the chamber. the chamber you say in his own case that happens journalists leave to cover his own courtesy meetings outside the chamber virtually on daily basis Okay, um, Joseph, thank you very much. Um, is there more to that statement? Uh, in the final paragraph, Kitado makes the point that the uh, parliament, parliament as an institution, the speaker, leaders, and the entire membership of the house remain committed to the ideals of a free media and freedom of speech as provided for in chapter 12 of the 1992 constitution and will not do anything to jeopardize them. Well, we appreciate that they, they know that. Um, I, I want to quickly bring back again, uh, very quickly, um, what the minority leader indeed said. Make up your mind when, after listening to that. I mean, there's a bit of a controversy when we had Sam George uh, saying that the speaker, his minority leader, did not, um, you know, entirely agree. What did the minority leader say after Chairman Sabonsu, the majority leader, had made the point about journalists leaving the chamber and covering other things when the chamber is in session? All the time, in the minority, and you are there as majority. And probably tomorrow will be here again. The clock will always change. I agree that the media should be dutiful to this parliament and to this house. And therefore, the media will behave in a manner that you are serving the institutions of parliament and not any input from a member of parliament. And the speaker, it does not lie within the majority leader to determine who holds what of friends where. That is why we are elected representatives. We are entitled to media, not just the parliamentary media. So, beautifully the media, we beautiful to the institution of parliament. And we are by his past antecedents. The media is guided by his past antecedents. Sitting here as minority leader. In what you do, whether those antecedents serve this house, or serve the purpose as leader of the minority then, but I, 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 I agree with you that the media must be up and doing. They should cover the proceedings of government. Um, Madam Kate Addo uh, is the uh, Director of uh, Communications for the Parliament, joins us on the telephone line right now. Madam Kate Addo, so I understand that you've, you've called a meeting tomorrow with your colleague, journalist? Yes, we have called a meeting tomorrow morning. Okay. With, with, with my colleagues, yes. Uh, you made the point in your statement that the, the, the 
speaker did not gag. But when he uses words in his directive, like, you are forbidding from doing any other work outside the chamber, and then adds to it a threat that if you do, I will ban you. I will withdraw your welcome. That is gagging, some may interpret. Well, I don't know. I mean, if you listen to the totality of what the speaker said, he did say also that he holds the work of the media in high regard. And that is because of the fact that he holds the work of the media in high regard that the media is giving the opportunities that they are given on the floor of the house. So um, it's easy to take part of what was said and, and give uh, them the meaning that uh, we, we see depending on what particular um, activity or agenda we are seeking to pursue. But I've had co uh, conversations with the speaker subsequent to um, the happening in the chamber, and he made it very clear to me that he, he has indeed, uh, throughout his career, fought for freedom, not just of the press, but any kind of freedom that he can think of. And so he, 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 he can't see how um, at the peak of his career he would seek to guard the very tool that he's used you know, to, to get to where he is. So I think it, it's more uh, a, a case of uh, taking the bits that, that see in a certain way and, and giving them a certain, a certain light. Okay, so this is not going to be enforced, will they? Sorry? Will this be enforced tomorrow? If something's happened out of Parliament, and we have already indicated our editorial discretion will dictate what we cover. If we decide to cover something whilst Parliament is, is holding a session on the floor, outside the chamber, I, I are we going to be sanctioned? Speaker, I, don't, I don't think the Speaker uh, um, um, is looking to sanction anybody for doing their work. In fact, I, and I said in another station not so long ago that what the Speaker always says, and he always talks about the media in very passionate sentences, um, he wants to see a media that goes behind the story. He doesn't like a, a, he said he said stories. He wants people who are doing research. The only way you can do research is if you are going behind the story. All he was seeking to say is that let's maximize our time here so that if, if let's say, we are starting sitting at 10, and he gets the same directive to the members of, of parliament, that if you are seeking media uh, um, opportunities... I'm sorry, I didn't hear him giving a direct... Was that directed to the members I, of today? I have, I have sent, I've sent one, one... I've sent the, the voice notes to one of your... Well, was that said sure. today? It was said today. If you listen to what the speaker said, if you listen to what he said, and I've sent the, the notes to one of your colleagues, and he did indicate that if you're seeking media attention, do that before or after. Yeah, did, did he threaten sanctions for the MPs as well when he said that? Um, I have not paid particular attention. Yes, but for us but it was he, clear. He was threatening us with when, sanctions when, if we, when, if we breach his directive. When he said uh, um, certain actions will attract sanctions, he wasn't referring exclusively to members I'm of I'm sorry, he was. He was exclusively referring. He was, he was I can play no, that to I, you. I, I can play uh, that to you I, I, just I, I, to uh, avoidance I, of that. He was absolutely I, I, clear that this um, is the you, media. Have you, played, have you played what he said in total? I have played what he says in total as far as the media is concerned. That entire, it was like five did you Did you hear the bit when he referred to the members and said, if you are looking for media opportunities, do the about type sitting now is. Uh, I'm sorry, but that didn't come within the five minutes where he focused on the media. No, but, 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 but he, did, he did do that. Within no, the but time. that's why I asked and, you whether when he said that, he added a, a, a threat to the I'm MPs he was in charge of. And I'm saying to you that I have sent the voice note to your, to your media house. I'm not doubting that, but I'm asking you when he made the point about the MPs he superintends. Did he add a potential sanction to that? It was, it was at the same time that it was talking hey, about I'm, I'm sorry he, it wasn't. I have listened to the entire part. When he was speaking about <laughs> the sanctions, so now, so he now was it's explicit it's the, uh, about uh, media. I, I cannot, that's, we, we, it's, we shouldn't be uh, speaking heads about it. Let's listen to what he said about when he talked about the sanctions and within which context he was making that. I want to let the media know if that which is reported to have happened to happen anymore. I have reminded you of the fact that you are here as guests. By my permission, because of the importance this house attaches to the inky profession, any such deviation will make you an unwelcome guest, and your welcome will be duly 
withdraw. After sitting, that is when I rise, I want to meet the head of the group as well as the director of public affairs and her group. Manamado, that's your reference to you. That there you see, was that there was exclusive. That threat was exclusive see, to the uh, journalist. Listen, 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 listen. Well, we, we, can, we can, we can, I mean, we can do this, uh, or we can, we can also decide to look at. This is not what. This was the only thing he said. He said this in addition to other things. We can take this part and play it, and it would look a certain way. We can also take the part where he says. I hold the media in high esteem and play it, and it will look a certain way. And that's why I'm saying that let's look at this in its entirety and decide that based on everything that he said, was there malice intended? If there was no malice intended, was anything lost in translation? Was something said that should not have been said, or was something interpreted that shouldn't have been interpreted? When we do that, then we will find common ground and talk about it. Because this is something that is worth talking about. But if we take just bits of what he said and then make it look like, it, make it look probably worse than it actually is, then it's not fair to all the parties concerned. But what I'd like to, um, if you would permit, it, per, permit me, what I'd like to put on record is the fact that what Mr. Speaker is seeking to do is to build consensus and find common ground for our mutual benefit. He's saying that if we start sitting at 10, and at 10, what we want is coverage, and you are also looking for your stories, do them at a time when it will interfere with this, or after the time, so that we will all have benefit of our time there. And, and, and in fact, what I can tell you is that when we've had news conferences, when we've had interactions with the media, and your, your correspondents will tell you, most of the time, we speak about time. And we decide that because this is happening at this time, let's do this at this time or at that time. It is, it is unfortunate that this has come to the public uh, and we are discussing it yeah. in the media rather than at home. But maybe it's also to improve on our democracy. And Mr. Speaker, in fact, I remember the last thing he said. He said, let's have progressive development in our democracy. Yeah. And that's how he ended the sentence. Well, I'm a, I mean, I understand that like, tomorrow you're meeting the uh, journalists, and so we'll see how that goes. Madame Ketado, uh, I, I called him earlier, I called him because, in fact, that's uh, who she is uh, first before she speaks for Parliament. Madame Ado, I'm grateful that you join us. Um, uh, Pao, the, the, we have a flood of messages on this. Loads and loads of them. I take this one. He says, what's happening in Parliament is the test of its leadership, majority and minority alike. This one from Kofi Mensa Inosu. He says, so Evans, apparently the Honourable Speaker now has uh, the impetus to decide what is news for the citizenry. I thought Parliament was a representation of the Ghanaian populace. Apparently, I cry, my beloved country, he says. And Joseph from Accra says, I don't think Joy FM reporters or any other journalist should be surprised at the Speaker's caution to the parliamentary pressmen because what I see going on at the side of the NDC MPs is not helping this country at all. Uh, that's Joseph's message. This one from Obrimpong Owusu. He writes from the Department of Sociology, University of Ghana. He says, I do.